QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022 Manual Payroll Setup. Get ready because we bookkeeping pros are moving up the hilltop with QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file going through the setup process with the view drop down, the open windows list on the left hand side, company drop down home page in the middle, maximizing that home page to the gray area. Remembering that we have multiple payroll options, we could be paying for payroll within QuickBooks and there's different tiers of the payroll that you can pay for, but we're going to be using the manual payroll, perfect for practice problems, which is what we will be using. However, probably not something that you want to do when you're running payroll live due to the fact that although every little component of payroll is fairly basic, when you put them all together, they get quite overwhelming quite quickly. It's nice to have software that can give you that internal control, that kind of double check. And the software within QuickBooks helps you to do that. They might actually provide some support as well with it as well. You also want to think about your other payroll options that could be outside of QuickBooks, possibly running payroll through like a pay, an ADP or a Paychex as an option. Payroll being one of those things that you would like to get set up properly from the start. It's not as easy to be switching up your payroll process as other types of things due to the fact that if you change in the middle of the year then you've got you know your year end data with your w2 information and that kind of stuff has to be kind of transferred over so it could be somewhat of a tedious task to be transferring your payroll you know mid-year or it would be nice if you can get your payroll set up the first time so you want to kind of think about what's the process that you can use is it large enough that it has the capacity for me to grow into it without being so you know elaborate that it's going to cost me too much at the start when I don't have that big of a payroll kind of needs. These are kind of things you want to think about, possibly talk to your accountant or CPA about it. And when talking to someone about it, I recommend talking to someone that you don't recommend or you're not planning on paying for the payroll so that you're paying for an independent, uh, in, independent opinion about what you should do with regards to payroll and then go talk to the people that are actually providing the payroll to determine you know what the what the best thing should do from there would be okay so we're going to turn on the manual payroll you could go down here and turn off on payroll here you also have the option if you go to the edit drop down and we go down to the preferences we see the payroll options on the left hand side so we turned on the payroll options last time in the company preferences and we put full payroll and then we had the manual option here so if you turn on the manual option it's probably going to give you a little little pop-up saying are you sure you want the manual option and try to sell you you know the full payroll option and so on and we're going to use the manual option which is great again for the practice problems as you turn that on or have some kind of payroll you'll then see this arrow down on the bottom will which will indicate that you have some payroll within the quickbooks system that is running then you have some options with regards to the pay stub and voucher printing so payee address company address i'm going to be keeping the de the default settings here with it i'm going to say okay and then your workers comp which is something that is going to be on more of a company by company level we're going to focus here basically broadly speaking on the federal kind of components so i'm going to close this back out well, before I do, let's just go through the rest of them. Copy earnings details from previous paychecks. So we're going to keep the default as no uh, recall quantity field on paychecks. We're going to keep that default. Recall hour field on paychecks. We'll keep that as the default. These are going to be typical types of things that might make it easier to do the data input. Job costing and item tracking for paycheck expenses. We might not be doing that much here, but we're going to keep it on by the default. And then changing the employee name display preferences will cause all QuickBooks desktop windows to close. Please finish uh, paying your employees before you do. So we can have the first name, last name. This is how it's gonna basically display. Do you want the first name, last name, or the last name, comma, first name? Mark new employees as sales rep. So we're not gonna have any of the sales rep display employee social security numbers in headers on the reports. And so we're gonna say no here. You can see that that could be useful in some cases, but of course there's gonna be the security issue with regards to the social security numbers. So we're going to be closing that out and then we'll go to the employee center. I'm going to go up top to the employee drop down and the employee center and just look at our employees here. Also note that as we set up our items, if you go to the lists drop down and we go to the payroll items list, then we're going to have the items that basically have been set up 
by default by basically turning on the payroll, advanced earned income, the federal employment, the federal withholding, the Medicare, the Medicare employee, Social Security company, Social Security employee items helping us to populate the payroll in the system. Back to the employees, we're just going to set up two employees here, similar to the setup if you're going to enter it in this way in this process to the vendors and customers. But we'll have the taxes that we'll have to deal with. So we're going to do one at a time here. Employee. And the first one I'm going to say is I'm just going to tap through it. Adam. We're going to say Adam Hamilton. We will say is the employee's name, Social Security, 565. We're going to say 655555. This is something that, of course, you need the Social Security and you would get a lot of this information from the W-4. So the employee would fill out the W-4. And then you're going to take that information and enter it into the system. You can get most of the stuff from there, including the name, social security number, gender. So we're going to say male for atom. And then we're going to say the date of birth, 09, 05, 1979, we're going to say. And marital status, we're going to say single. Marital status. If something notice that these items date of birth and marital status, you might say, why do I care? Like, I don't need, I'm their employer. I don't need to know these things really for their employment. But, you know, we have to for taxes. So the taxes makes us, they're sing, you know, they got to know if they're single or not so we can know how much to withhold for their taxes. And you could have differences with regards to their, their date of birth. So typically we'll have that. And then U.S. citizen, we're going to say yes. As to ethnicity, I'm not going to put anything at this point in time there. Disability. And so I'm going to say no, and uh, I-9 form on file, I'll say yes there. And then I'm going to say military, I'm going to say no there. And then we got the address, so we're going to need the address, because of course we've got to put the address on their W-2 and whatnot. So now we got to tell the employer, the employer knows where you live. So we're going to say 1231, and we're going to call this Lago Vista drive we'll say beverly we'll call it beverly hills california and then we'll say it's 90210 90210 we probably want the phone but i'm not going to put a phone well we can put like 555 the good old 55 five, five, seven, just to mix it up there on the phone number email we would probably want may not be required for the reporting purposes for the w-2s and so on the work phone, I'll keep that as is. Let's keep that no CC email, mobile. I won't put anything there, although we might want that for personal information. Emergency contact, we would probably want that for personal use or for the business HR purposes, but I won't put that here. Additional information. So account number, we're not going to put any additional information here. And then we get to the payroll information. Here's where the heart of the stuff comes. I'm going to close the little icon on the left. So payroll schedule, we're going to say, here's where we're going to choose whether we're, it's going to be daily, weekly, weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, and so on. And that, of course, will depend on your payroll process. So we're going to say it's going to be monthly here for the payroll. And then you have the direct deposit information, taxes we'll talk about in a second, and the sick ver uh, vacation. We're going to go here and add the item first. So if I hit the drop down, we don't have any actual items for the payroll yet i'm just going to type in salary for payroll and set that up so we're going to set up the item for salary we're going to go through the setup process to do so and so we got the hourly wages annual wage commission bonus so i'm going to say this is an annual because we're going to say it's salary next regular pay so is this item for regular overtime sick or vacation i'm going to say regular pay it's going to be salary that's going to be the name of the item the payroll expense, enter the account for tracking this expense, meaning when you expense it, what's the account going to go to for it? And we're just going to put it to payroll expense. You can create another account if you so choose, which would create an account in your chart of accounts here for it. And you might want to break out like salary versus hourly, or you might want to break it out by department, for example, and have different employees with different departments. Although be careful with that because payroll can be complex and it's nice to have, you know, <laughs> It all in one place when you're trying to tie it out to the year-end information. So we'll finish that off. And so there we have it. And we're going to say, so we're going to say 55,000 here, 55,000. And that's going to be the annual. So the annual. So that means if they get paid monthly, 55,000 divided by the 12 would give us 
what happened there. Hold on a sec. 55,000 divided by 12. Yeah, 4,583. Now we'll add the tax information. So I'm going to we'll go to this item up top. Tax information typically is going to come from the W-4, which is going to look something like this. So you got the employees withholding certificate, the W-4. You've got uh, part two, multiple jobs. And then we've got the claim dependents, other adjustments. We're just going to enter basic information for, for purposes of our practice problem. We're going to be changing to 2020. So it's basically saying, hey, look, uh, if you convert it to the 2020 W-4, you can't really revert back to the prior one. So I'm going to say OK there. That's me recapping. Filing status. So we got married, head of household exempt. We're going to be keeping it at the single or married filing separate. And then we're going to keep these as they are. So I'm not going to change anything for the claim dependents, other income deductions or extra withholdings. This information generally coming from then the W-4. And then we have the checkoff for the Medicare, Social Security, Advanced Earned Income Credit. We'll keep that off as the default. And the federal unemployment tax. So those are generally the defaults to be applied. Those are the federal taxes. And then we have the state tab. Now, I've been putting the address of California. And California would have a state tax. But the state tax will be different from state to states. And local taxes will be different. So to keep a generic kind of problem... I'm going to try not to put in a state tax so we can just focus in on the federal side of things, which will be blanketing be uniform in essence for the entire country. And then you'll have similar mirroring kind of activity if the state has similar, if they're mirroring similar kind of taxes on the state side. So I'm going to try to keep that blank and see if it lets me in. Same with the other. So if there are any, I'm going to say continue. If there are any other kind of local taxes and so on here, then I'm going to try to keep that blank as well. So I'm going to say, okay. And the state is not selected. I'm going to say continue and see if we can keep that as is. I'm not going to put anything in for the direct deposit. So we'll keep that as is. So I'm going to say OK. And so do you wish to set up payroll information for sick? The payroll information for the items listed above currently matches the employee defaults. I'm going to set leave it as is. I'm going to say leave it as is. So we can just focus on the basics here. We do have another course basically on payroll in general. So you can get into that in a bit more detail. But we'll get the general idea of the, how the payroll is calculating. Let's add one more employee. I'm going to add another employee. And this one, we're going to say the name up top is going to be Erica, last name Smith. And so we're going to say Erica Smith. We're going to say Social Security 564-574941. We obviously made that up. And then female. And then we're going to say date of birth 12-31-79. Marital status, we're going to say is married. So we'll say married. And then citizen, yes. Ethnicity, I'm going to leave it blank. And I don't think they're requiring that at this point, although they might, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they required it at some point. But I, but we'll just go on to this. Disa so disabled, I'm going to say no. We're going to say yes here. And military, and no. So disabled, no i9 yes and military okay so then let's go to the address she also lives in beverly hills 90210 9425 sunset blv these are mansions i just looked up mansions beverly hills california 90210 all right home the main phone number 555 something da 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 and I won't put the email or any of this information. And so we'll keep the rest of that blank. And then additional information, nothing there. We'll take a look at the payroll information. This is where the this is where the heart of the matter is. So we're going to say we pay monthly. So we'll say monthly. And then I'm not going to use the same item, which is salary. We're going to say this is going to be hourly to practice the other kind of payroll that's often common. Set it up. This is going to be hourly wages, hourly wages regular pay hourly and then we're going to keep it going to the same payroll account you could set up another one you could say these are the hourly payroll and then versus the salaried payroll or executive pay versus somewhat or something like that but we're going to keep it going to the same payroll account so we have two two things going to the same payroll so i think we're going to put the wages at 15 so let's just say 15 for now let's let's make it let's put it 15 so then we go to taxes up top and then same kind of thing we would i'm going to change this to the to the 2020 and say okay and then we're going to say this is going to be now married filing jointly we're going to say 
and then I'll keep this unchecked. And again, I'm not going to be adding anything here. You'd be pulling this information from the W-4, checking off the Medicare, Social Security, and the federal unemployment tax. Those are the ones that we'll focus in on. We're going to try once again not to add the state or any other local and see if it'll let us calculate the payroll without them to make a generic problem for the federal in general. So I'm going to continue here. So just continue. And so there we have that. So we'll say OK and then leave as is. And, and again, if they force us when we process the payroll, so I'm going, to un, I'm going to unhide the carrot on the left and I'll go back to the home page. So we'll try to process the payroll in a future presentation when we get to entering data and see if it lets us process it, even though we said they're in California and we don't have the California payroll tax because we're trying to keep it as a generic federal tax to basically simple or make the problem kind of uniform over, over the country to focus in on that part. So that's going to be the idea of it. We've got our payroll individuals set up now, allowing us to process, remembering that we're going to be using the manual process to do so. When we process the payroll, we'll go into this item. It might look a little bit different when you think about, you know, when you click the payroll processing icon between the different paid options you have for payroll and the manual, but you have a, the general sense this, this actual page here looks basically the same. And then you can go into each of these items and basically look at the actual calculations of the payroll. So if I was to check this off, I got to check it off and then I can look at it. So this is the calculation of the payroll. Now this one, the salary is calculated, but it didn't calculate any of the Medicare, the federal taxes and so on. That's what we'll have to do manually. That's what the QuickBooks system would do automatically kind of for us, which is kind of good for a practice problem because then we can practice entering it manually. But in practice, in actual practice in, in the field, you'd probably like to have them to calculate it because if you make an error in the calculation, then that, that causes problems. It's kind of a pain to adjust payroll calculation errors. <laughs> so it's nice to have a check of the software to help you out with that typically as kind of an internal control. So I'm going to close that back out. So we have that. Open this back up. We've also set up our items down below. The payroll items are going to be here now. So now we've included the hourly and the salary as our payroll items to help us to populate. This is going to be the back end or the workings of QuickBooks to help us to process the payroll, which we'll do in the next section when we start entering data for a month worth of data.